Hi guys, welcome to another digital painting video. My name is Philippe Pinto and I am here once again to talk about composition, lighting and color. So last video, um, I asked for a lot of feedback from a lot of other people. Um, a lot of them watched the video and they felt that um, it was a bit vague. The truth is, um, the last video was a, more of an introduction to, to my videos, to my YouTube channel, and to sort of give you an idea about the art style that I usually do to my personal work, you know. Um, the problem was that for the last video I didn't actually have anything prepared to say. Um, and midway through I found out that it's actually a lot harder to speak my mind out. Um, than, than I expected, you know, not, not only that, but I was also pretty nervous, uh, it was my first video, and, and some people actually noticed that, that I was that nervous. My point is, um, although it was indeed just supposed to be an introduction, it still was a bit vague. I could have said a lot more about what I was doing on that painting, and um, the truth is, I could have talked about the techniques that I used that I used for for that painting and the brushes and the colors, I mentioned those a bit, but I was really vague about it. Uh, I mentioned the difference between um, cool and and warm colors, but I stood there, you know, like I had no idea what to say beyond that, uh, and not that that I didn't know what to say. I just didn't prepare myself for what I wanted to say, you know. Uh, because it's it, there's a difference between wanting to say something and actually know what you need to say. So I prepared this video to just tackle the, the same subjects uh, once again, but in a way that I'm hoping to be a bit more clear on, on the things that I want to say. So in this painting, I I actually started with the with a line sketch, just like uh, in the last video, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Uh, I knew I wanted to do a city, but that was pretty much it. Uh, I didn't know what what sort of city it was, uh, if it was uh, sort of medieval fantasy like or just sci-fi or uh, or something like that. But as you can see, I. Even though I started with uh, just medieval sort of ruins kind of style, uh, I ended up with uh, this mix between fantasy and Star Wars kind of kind of city. Um, but for for this painting, I really wanted to just focus on the designing of the city. And the truth is, I, I've been practicing cities uh, using different shapes, using different ar architecture. Um, because of my of my personal project, that's the main reason, um, and I really wanted to try to do just another another city from afar, uh, but uh, sort of in a different style. Um, I've done a painting uh, of a futuristic uh, city. Uh, I'll, I'll leave the link in the description if you if you're interested. Uh, but I did it uh, not very long ago, but it was it was pretty futuristic and. Um, I wanted to try something a bit different, a little bit more fantasy, but still futuristic, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, um, by this point, uh, most of what I did was just trying to adjust all the colors and the composition of the whole painting uh, to set it in the mood. Um, and in this case, uh, I really, uh, a really uh, huge uh, futuristic uh, fantasy-like city in the middle of the desert and in a way to also uh, also show a few of the of the locals in it you know um, to sort of make it a bit populated that's why uh, I put these two guys on the on the foreground um, along with a few I don't know huts I guess uh, metal huts um, or shacks <laughs> I don't know um, or something like that but these foreground elements uh, help a lot with the 
with a, with that with a specific need to make it populated, you know, because it's really important to sort of give life to your environments. Uh, in my case, I tend to do this quite a lot in, in the bad way, uh, which I basically sort of build a whole environment, I design it properly, I make really good composition, uh, I give it uh, good colors and good shapes, but then I tend to just not make it really that interesting, you know, because nothing's happening in it and there's there's no one, it's, it's just empty, uh, an empty space with some really tall buildings or something like that, you know, and uh, even even some some really uh, good artists sometimes make this mistake, which is basically not populate your own world. If you're creating a world, uh, it's really important to to sort of show a bit of the life in it. That's exactly why uh, right now you see me painting sort of this light on the on the city because just give give some lights to the to the city helps uh, sort of make it feel like there's someone there living you know um, or or just walking around uh, and um, to be honest I wasn't really happy with the colors uh, so far either so that's also why I I wanted to give it some something more interesting to look at uh, something more colorful and this is something that I've also found that it's actually important for a painting is sometimes you design the world so well and you have this perspective on the on the way atmospheric perspective works um, you know that with a certain hue of atmosphere, uh, the whole painting will be affected by it. And sometimes, just knowing that that specific fact, you end up actually designing something or painting something with only a few tones of the same color. And sometimes it gets really monotonous. Uh, and adding a f just a tiny bit of color, of a different color, uh, and saturated color, um, sometimes it really helps to make something a bit more interesting. And, and that's sort of what I tried to, to do with the lights on, on the city. Um, I wanted to make the world populated uh, and in the same time sort of make it feel more interesting overall. So at this point, I, I have pretty much all the all the colors and all the all the shapes, all the, the architecture and the the mood I want uh, in it defined. So I start to refine a bit of the details, uh, especially on the city, which is my my focal point, uh, and uh, I give it a bit more detail. And sort of later on, I try to. To give it a bit more contrast because it's still right now if you if you look at it it's still looking like it's just two or three colors you know two or two or three tones um the light uh, being being cast on it by, by the sun the the lights on the city are just one tone with the, the bit of glow uh, and reflection um but there's not really much that into it um and later on i i try i, I noticed that and i tried to to put a bit more more interest in it, like um, putting these three different tones uh, in the light uh, in the city, um, because uh, even even now, uh, although it looks a bit more interesting, uh, it's still kind of dull. And that's because uh, the light is really really similar in terms of value. Uh, if you look at the values of the of the the city and the the light coming from it. Uh, I have I actually uh, check the check the values here. Uh, if you look at those values, you can see that they're really close to each other. Um, the city itself and the light coming from it 
uh, have almost identical values uh, and when and light in value uh, doesn't really work that way uh, usually light is really really bright like for example uh, you can see in the the buildings in the background you you have this sort of rim light um, on on their edges uh, basically they're they're really really bright and you can you can really see the distinction between those rim lights and the structures themselves and that not not only that helps sort of uh, see that shape better uh, it also makes you feel the light you know and that's what I wanted to do with the city that's why uh, later on I I actually put some brighter tones in it um, to be to make it not only better in terms of value but also more interesting which is something really important so uh, always always try to check your values uh, as constant as possible that's actually a mistake that I did do when I when I tried to to put these lights on the city uh, in a way that's because I I wasn't really going to it was just an idea that came while I was doing the painting um, but but yeah you should always uh, try to check your values right from the start because light is really really important and if you if you think about light right at the start of a painting you not only you will be faster in doing that painting but your fundamentals we will be pretty much always right because light defines uh, defines the shapes of things defines uh, how the mood is defines uh, even your some of your perspective um, of your atmospheric perspective so think about that right from the start So right now I'm just in the last stages of, of detailing and making everything look a little bit more crispier uh, and more sort of edgy, you know, um, more well defined. Um, everything sort of looks uh, like I wanted it to be, um, but uh, my focal point is not yet really defined. I want to, to make the edges more more edgy, exactly that, more more sharp, uh, and even even in the the final stages of the painting, I end up even adding uh, a smart filter, uh, sorry, a filter um, of sharpen, because I really want to make the, the image crispier. Uh, but yeah, right now uh, I'm in the last stages of detailing. Um, the whole thing is pretty much defined, and the funny thing is that. Uh, after I actually start stop detailing everything uh, and sort of had exactly what I wanted, um, I showed this uh, on on my Facebook page and on uh, and at work, and uh, a few friends uh, gave me some feedback and uh, my my art lead uh, actually gave me some advice and some some feedback about the the work that I just did. Uh, it was it was exactly one of the the major topics of this uh, of this video, which was basically how to populate and uh, how to make an illustration sort of uh, more interesting, you know. And um, one of those things was that the the characters on the foreground they they looked just pretty much still, you know, like they were they were just standing there looking at the at the city, which which is not a bad thing in terms of composition because. It sort of helps you steer your eye to towards the painting and look at your focal point. Uh, and in this case, it was the city, and they were looking at the city, so it made sense. But the truth is, the city was already with so much contrast, uh, and uh, there was so ma there's already so many imaginary lines uh, guiding your eye uh, towards that city that. The first thing you actually end up seeing when you first look at the, the image 
uh, zoomed out is is the city itself and you don't really look at the other things in the in the painting uh, I mean you sort of get that hint that they exist but you don't look through it bec because the city is the only thing calling your attention um, so it gives me this idea uh, of putting at least one of those uh, of those guys uh, in the foreground to just instead of being just standing there uh, make them sort of doing something you know like you gave me a couple ideas and one of them was to sort of instead of having him standing uh, beside his bike he was actually standing on it uh, riding it to, uh, towards the city would be a lot more interesting and uh, I actually ended up uh, later uh, changing the painting and making that change and I have to say it was a really really nice feedback and this is something that also improves your uh, sort of your your final product your final artworks which is um, get constant feedback you know um, ask your friends ask, ask your family uh, ask artists um, especially artists to to give some feedback on on your work and it helps a lot uh, I know that ever ever since I started work uh, working at uh, at my company um, I never I never actually had constructive feedback from from someone I always had the, those compliments and those negative critics but never actually critic feedback about uh, what I should do or should not do and why and ever since I started working at the company I actually had that and I can really see uh, how that changes the way the way you look at something uh, and uh, and it helps a lot so get constant feedback uh, it makes everything a lot easier and once again uh, having something happening in the illustration in the in the in your final concept uh, also helps helps the image be a little bit more interesting so don't just put something there standing still looking at something uh, it's not really really that interesting guys thank you so much for watching up until now i really hope these hints help you in your artwork somehow i'm not exactly a master at this but i seriously hope the few knowledge that i have on these subjects give you uh, you know something to, to think about and maybe even to improve upon your own artwork i honestly hope i've done a better job with this video than i did last time last video was really vague and i wanted to make things clearer so i really hope i i was able to do that with this video it was still a bit hard for me to, to talk this much, to be honest, but I really hope I can improve on that and maybe even become better uh, at this for, for the next videos. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me your comments below. really want to know what you think about and feel free to follow me on social media like, like Facebook. I have a Facebook page. Follow me on that uh, or even ArtStation. I usually post my my sketch and my, my sketches and my artwork there. So. Yeah, th thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to keep track of the videos. I hope you've enjoyed.